music, rock stars, guitars, being a DJ. That led to me working on the number one comedy of all time. Now I do warm up and stand up. I combined comedy and music. It makes me happy. That's why this is the Scott Blue Brown Capital, a talk show about comedy and music. Tonight on Scott Blue Grind's Happy Hour Comedy and Music Talk Show. We have the cast of the award winning indie film Pinch, including filmmaker Jake Ward, actor Kenny Cooper, Tony Wayne, Derek T. Tuggle, Julie Tyler, Jake Brown, Melanie Johnson, Wes Robertson, Michael Foster, plus after the final pinch. Insider look into the Bachelor Mansion with season three Bachelorette contestant Michael Foster. Let's learn more about Pinch. This week on Scott Bluegrind's Happy Hour, the hit indie film that gave me a role from the script to an award winning festival run all the way to prime time. It's Pinch. everybody what's up it's scott bluegrind and this is the scott bluegrind happy hour comedy and music talk show so happy you're here tonight we've got a special episode different than the other ones because tonight's about a movie mm. movie made by filmmaker jake lloyd and one of the people in the movie is me i play a character named clark i had so much fun it's a baseball movie it's got heart it's got romance it's got a little bit of everything it's got heart people you're gonna love it you're gonna love it a lot I do. I've seen it a bunch of times, and it still gets to me. <laughs> Anyways, tonight we're going to speak to filmmaker Jake Lloyd and a bunch of the cast about our experiences getting into the movie, making the movie, after the movie, at the festivals with the movie. Oh, and to tell you the truth, I'm just glad I got to see everybody because they were the nicest people, and I got to talk to everybody, and oh, it's kind of good for my soul. Can I be honest? I loved it. So I hope you like this episode. This is Pinch. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Mr. Jake Lloyd. Round of applause. Hey, thank you so much for uh, chatting with me, Scott. I appreciate it. Yeah. It looks like, I, I just want to say that it's in the middle of the day here on Sunday, and it looks like uh, it looks like midnight where you're from right now. Well, it's always happy hour. Oh, oh happy, happy hour. Idea? Yeah, oh, okay. Jake Lloyd is the writer, producer, director, star, cinematographer, craft service distributor, editor of pinch a great yeah, just, independent movie good to say filmmaker i appreciate oh, all that <laughs> we'll wrap it all in but I appreciate that but he took this this wonderful script and shot it with a very what was the camera you used just a little small canon dslr just a little canon 7d um wow. just a really simple little dslr uh and yeah i i wrote the entire thing uh i sort of took a idea for a script that i had that i knew i couldn't make because of budgetary reasons and i changed it to fit the desire to just make something the the catalyst for the movie not that you asked but i i talk so this is how it works i'm just gonna go ahead and dive into this story yeah tony uh, tony yeah. tony tony and i um tony who's my co-star in the movie tony wayne incredible actor uh tony and i uh we made a sh uh, like a little featurette uh a little uh, adventure movie a short film um, called the skull rosary. And, uh, it's this weird little like action adventure, Indiana Jones movie that we shot. And we were 
uh, we were touring that through film festivals and uh, other things. And a friend of Tony's uh, invited us to this uh, Prairie Gate Literary Festival, mm. which is a literary festival in uh, Minnesota. Um, and uh, uh, we were there. Uh, at a college for this literary festival as the only screenwriting. They never had screenwriters. They always have like poets and, uh, and you know, uh, certain types of narrative authors and memoirists and all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff. And they were like, oh, this year we want to have screenwriters. So they had Tony and I come. And the entire week we did workshops and classes for all these college students mm. who were looking to get into filmmaking um, or screenwriting or whatever the case may be. And I spent the entire weekend... Um, reiterating to these students over and over and over again, whenever they would ask like, Oh, well, how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I, I kept saying like, just make something. You have no right. excuse not to make something. It's too easy to make a movie these days, technologically, meaning, you know, like meaning right. you don't need a lot. Um, so just make something. So people be like, Oh, well, I want to make my first short, but I want to do this. I want to do this. And I would always be like, no buts, just go do one. Even if it's not the one you want to do, do something different, make something shorter, make something quicker. Make something more easy. And I kept, oh my God, if I said it once, I said it a hundred times that weekend. And uh, I'm sitting on the plane home and uh, my own words are echoing through my head about like, just make something. You have no excuse. I have no excuse. At that point, I had been shopping this feature for about two years that I've been trying to get a budget to make. Mm. And, uh, and I would, for two years, I've been trying to make this film and it was always just like, well, it's a it's a bi-coastal story and we need planes and we need all this sort of stuff. Mm. And I'm like, well, all right, instead of me waiting for somebody to allow me to make this movie, I need to listen to myself. I want to make a feature. I need to just do it. I have no excuse not to make one. So I literally popped open my little book where I have all of my little, uh, breakdowns of all these different features and all these different stories that I want to tell. And I found one. And this is actually a fun fact. A little behind the scenes is that it's a hockey movie. Originally, it was actually about <laughs> hockey. Um, and I, it was, it was a more of a comedy. It was more like zany cartoony sort of in the vein <laughs> of like uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world where it was oh, like wow. very like, it was like arcadey and kind of silly. And I looked at sort of the basic outline and I thought like, well, all right, it's about these two guys. And I was like, this could be myself and this could be Tony. And then I was like, well, hockey's too hard. Cause you can't, it's not like you can teach people to fake it to play hockey, right. you know, like you can't go also, gorilla style in a hockey rink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And also like just finding the ability to have my friends like, you know, whereas yeah. like you can fake baseball a little bit easier. And especially right. the idea being that like baseball is that sort of easy rooted American pastime where it's like yeah. everybody, even if you've never played baseball on a team, you've been on a baseball field, you've thrown a ball, you have a mitt somewhere. Like, I feel like it's such a thing so rooted in our culture. Right. That I sort of like, all right, well, let me make it baseball. I know we can do it. We can easily find a field and and uh, I have all this baseball equipment and stuff like that. So um, and then I kind of just reformed what this outline was for this movie uh, using inspirations from mine and Tony's real lives. So it's the comedy sort of drifted away and it became a little bit more of a drama. Hockey turned into baseball and I outlined I re outlined the entire movie on the plane home. Uh, that was May 17th. We had, uh, I, I rewrote it for like two weeks. We had our table read, I want to say like May 30th. And then our first day of shooting was May 31st or, or, or like June 3rd, 2nd or 3rd, something like that. So it was like a really quick, super, super quick turnaround for the whole thing. I was hearing that you, Tony... And uh, Jake were working on 24 in the background. Yep. And I know that a lot of people talk, talk, talk in the background. Uh, but these guys from the background made movies. You guys have you worked on uh, a series, The Board. You guys mm-hmm. did The Skull Rosary, went around a bunch of festivals. And then Pinch, tell me about how all this happened with three guys from background rocking it out and making some real projects. Yeah, I, I think your first statement is so true. Like background <laughs> is all about the talk. Yeah, <laughs> like, you get exactly. So guys talk, they talk, and um, to be able to do it, especially with those guys, you know, so talented, they're so talented. And it is like 
if you look at me, Jake, and Tony, we're three completely different guys. <laughs> totally. Like the fact you know, like that we would work together, it was like nobody would say it. Like to your point earlier, <laughs> yeah. and said, you know, one thing that bond, binded us and kind of brought us together and found out we have a lot in common. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it, to, to be able to do that with those guys is crazy and, you know, um, and kind of just crazy and, and uh, amazing at the same time because – like who does that type of stuff? And and most credit is to dri- to Jake to like being the driving force of like, hey guys, come on, let's go do this. And like, eh, you know, uh, <laughs> and we're like, eh, okay, all right, sure. Um, but um, but yeah, it's it's great and um, it's just a lot of fun, you know, a lot of fun. Um, you get back to why you why we're all in this business, and uh, it's it's for the love of it and for the fun of it, man. We wanna, you know, we wanna we wanna play make believe. Yeah, tell you know? stories. <laughs> Yeah, tell stories, play make believe. That's what we want to do. It makes us feel good. So, um, and hopefully, we can make other people feel good by watching. And uh, Melanie wasn't even there to audition for our movie. Oh, she was in the casting facility for a different project, and I walked out. And I was I was there auditioning for some Scott! horror film that I didn't book anyway. So forget about them yeah um but yeah yeah then jake came out into the hallway and he saw me and he was like are you like here for rachel and i was like no and so i go do you want to be it's like sure <laughs> so i yeah. handed her the sides so then he gave me the sides i handed the sides i was like take your time let us know when you're ready and come in and read so then i i read them over quickly and i was like oh i think i understand this woman And then Julie, Tony and Julie, uh, the characters of Roy oh, and right. and Jane, uh, she, Julie came into audition. She just saw the call online. There was no, you know, it was just a rant, very random. It was like, oh, I saw this thing for a movie. I want to go audition for this movie. She- I get the audition. I go in. They introduce themselves. Concentrated on her audition, you know. I'm sure actors, you're a little nervous, whatever. You're concentrated, you're focused, you're doing your thing. And, I, yeah. and so I did my read, and then at the end of it, so she finished. I, I remember I said, "Hey, Julie, I'm I'm Tony. You remember me from class?" And she was like, "Oh, oh my God, Tony, <laughs> Tony! Of course, we studied together in New York City, and we were friends. Like we were buds. We spent hours, you know, mm. after class." debriefing and you know going to get coffee and smoking a cigarette and you know doing the new york acting thing and talking about acting and it was like all about (laughs) and that was uh super fun Uh, julie rather was just the clear winner for jane because of their incredible history tony was just thought it was kismet i don't know i'm not i'm not a big fate kismet kind of person (laughs) but that is that is pretty pretty coincidental And I met Jake Lloyd down at Venice Beach when um, we were down there. He was he was doing a um, a video for this guy that I knew, Larry Greenfield, and he had a company called Big Bat Grips. Like I still got a pair around here somewhere, but basically it's uh, instead of wearing like gloves to the gym, it's kind of like imagine a, a, a tactical mouse pad. And the way mm. you you use it, you use it whenever you're doing like lifting exercises or hard on your hands. Mm. So he had me down there being the spokesperson, you know, walking around. Now try it with Big Bat Grips. And Jake was filming it. And I'm like, I like this dude. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just always kind of uh, stayed in touch a little bit. And then that's when he hit me up for the Skull Rosary, on and on and on. And then he's like, hey, I'm doing the sketch comedy of the board. And I was like, oh, sign me up. Uh, so tell me a little bit about how you got the role of one of the Daves in the movie Pinch. Um, well, it actually came from a... Uh, audition I had had with uh, Jake and Tony before mm. and um, they had an audition up over at Cats and yeah. um, I had auditioned but I didn't get the part. For me it was Dare Tuggles because my friend made that Black Keys video uh, that he's famously uh, dancing in Lonely Boys and I looked on the back of his, uh, his uh, resume and I'm like, I'm like you're the guy from Lonely Boys be like I love this guy I love this uh, that's crazy. I'm I was like, to, I'm just however you up. get him involved, please put this guy in the movie. Yeah, you really can't, you know, uh, count count yourself out because you know 
maybe you weren't right for that one. Right. But then, like like with uh, Print Pinch, he had this. It was like, hey, you know, I thought about you. Would you want to do it? Sure. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a nice phone call to get. Right. I remember the day I came in to CADS, CADS was C A T Z, the audition place. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I came in and I auditioned when I first read the script. I'm like, I am Clark. So that's the first thing I opened with. I said, in my group of friends, I'm the Clark. I'm the always enthusiastic. Let's go. And uh, you guys kind of laughed. That was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, that was great. I, I know. Uh... <laughs> we loved you right away. You know, we had a, obviously again, we had so many people come and read and, and uh, you know, you, you, I am, if I'm not mistaken, you like legitimately invited us to like go do something that night. And like, we had just met you and I was like, that's exactly what Clark would do. Like he would be like, you guys want to go get some beers or go to a bar? And I'm like, dude, we're trying to cast a movie here. And then we were all like, yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy right there. <laughs> I think my yeah. band was playing. I'm like, come see my band. That's what it was. Oh, right. That's what it was. Super yeah. And so we were, we were, we were all just like, yeah, that's, that's the energy. That's the energy we were looking for. <laughs> well, I think that I definitely think that after your, your audition, anybody else that came in for it, we're just like, no, nah, no, nah, we, hmm. we already know. Dude, that makes me feel so good. <laughs> if only every audition went that way, <laughs> then we're getting beers and listening to Supergirl soundtrack. <laughs> But you're getting roles. It's all that matters. I don't remember nothing. And I won't answer anything. Uh, I did eat a very cold hamburger. I did not know that story. Yeah. That is super cool. Yeah. Can you tell me some of your favorite memories out there on that beautiful baseball field that every time that comes on the movie and I, I see those mountains and that field, I just, I just want to go back. How does it make you feel to watch all that? Oh man. I don't know. We had so much fun. I mean, <laughs> I like the fun and the, and the messing around the, the screwing around and, and you know, at the same time, just throwing the ball back and forth, just being out there on the field was great. But then there were some things that I, I hold in my memory that I'm like, that they probably weren't the best things, but I sure do hold them in my memory. Is um, I remember one time I was pitching, okay. and uh, and Jake was up, uh, uh, and uh, Jake who, who plays the the pitcher oh, Jake of Brown. the other team, you know, yeah. and I accidentally, you know, I threw a wild pitch and I hit him right in the leg, and I felt so bad. I was like, oh my goodness, we're just trying to trying to make a movie and i'm beaming this guy by accident you know? <laughs> my dad my father was a baseball coach for he was 13 years he's the varsity head coach at my, my school and so i mean oh, wow. when i say yeah so when i'm talking about baseball for me i literally you know you hear about these kids that play hockey and they started skating since they could walk i was playing baseball since i could walk so mm. uh you know when you say i'm perfect for the movie most of the time you're like i don't know they could have got some but in this case it's like look i look at it like this all right Playing baseball every single day of my life for since I played two years in college, I'd say 20 years. All right. Wow. That and 99 cents would get me a cup of coffee, Scotty. <laughs> but in the one instance that somebody cast me as a slugger in a baseball mm. movie, then damn it, I'm going to rock that role. <laughs> so, I tell you, I was at, in that batting cage scene. And, I know. I mean, it was fun. And those balls just went, Poo! it made a whole different sound when you connected. It was like, cool. <laughs> Felt bad for those balls. <laughs> we, um, I wasn't there when the younger team was hanging out. There's some scenes at the apartment and in the dugout and stuff. Can you tell us about having fun with those guys? Yeah. <laughs> so just as you can tell from the film, it's a cast of characters. And oh, I think yeah. in real life, Jake, Jake did a, re a real good job of casting and, and putting everybody in spots in, in real life that, that fit them. Um, so... <sighs> Like, it, it, I can't say that it was improv, but there was a lot of, like, okay, riffing. And then it didn't stop. Like, when it, when it was, when it, when it, when Jake yelled cut, people were still going. So it was like, it was a lot of fun. It was, it, that made the days go. We, uh, we quickly fast. bonded pretty quick. It was a, it was oh, a really yeah, good, yeah. it was a good cast, yeah. you know. And I'm just going to say this. 
And I know that Mike, uh, the the Brido, uh, the hunk, and uh, Johnny will agree with me, and Jake. Uh, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that the uh, the the B team or whatever the the bad team, in reality, I think we probably would have won a real game. Bring it, bring versus it, you the, young punks. <laughs> versus the pretty boys. I'm just saying, they look very nice. They might not be able to throw a baseball. Um, yeah. If it was a contest of who had the lowest body fat, yeah. They got oh, us. Yeah. They got they us. Got us. But they let's play it. ball, boys. Let's play some ball. All right? <laughs> <laughs> if a strong wind comes, woo, they get knocked over. What are you going to do then? What are you going to do? What are you going to do then? No. <laughs> not going to win a baseball game. Anyway. <laughs> wanted to ask was the first time you saw it at one of the film festivals yeah the first time i saw it was at the laughlin film festival which we went to together yeah, yeah. um and i remember not having like any expectations for this movie because mm-hmm. when it had taken like two years to film right. and i knew the budget was like next to nothing so i was like yeah like i'm excited to see it but like i don't have any expectations i have no idea how this is going to turn out right and then I remember watching it at Laughlin and being like, oh, my God, this is a great movie. Like, I'm so surprised. Um, I mean, obviously, I trusted Jake. But, yeah. you know, when you're making a movie for so little, I was like, you know, who knows what the quality is going to be like. But I remember standing up at the Q&A after it and just being like, this was great, right? I mean, this was an amazing <laughs> movie. Did anyone else, like, love this? Did you see this? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was good, right? It was actually really good. Um, so I was so... I was so proud of it. And so like just gushing with like love for Jake being like, I can't believe you made this. Like you did this. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, this is something that I'm going to be so proud to like show family and friends. Yeah. I, I remember um, I, it, I believe it screened on a Friday and mm-hmm. uh, I had a gig that day I had a warm up gig. And so I, I drove out that night. I, I showed up in, in Laughlin the next morning yeah. and I got out of my car and a bunch of kids were like, it's Clark from the movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh my and God. And they all took really pictures with me and I'm like, what happened last night? What happened? <laughs> and so I guess you, so know, you go to these film festivals and some of it's experimental or dark or mm-hmm weird yeah. shorts and stuff but this movie had oh, a heart and people really dug into it and i was just like wow i wish i was at that screening last night oh yeah people there were people were crying oh. yeah people really loved it they were very mm. touched and it was so cool to just be in i mean that's the first time i've seen any of my work on a big screen too, oh, me too. so just being in a theater like watching people like the thing that you put your heart into like and respond so well with laughter or tears was so like powerful. It was really cool. Um, yeah. So it was, it was such an awesome experience. Since the movie, we went to some festivals and I had one of the great experiences in Laughlin because we were at a banquet and this amazing musician was on stage (laughs) and your dad performed at the festival and completely crushed it. Can you tell me about how great it was to share both worlds with your father? Uh, amazing. I mean, um, just just to go back a little bit, my dad, um, you know, I never really heard him play music a lot growing up, only on certain holidays. He said he was a musician before I was born. Mm. And then he retired and he worked for 3M. He was a salesman for 30 some odd years and, and was like, I'm going to mm. go b- jump back into it. So now he performs. He has two albums. Um, he, Ken, Ken K. Brick Cooper is his name. Um, so to see that and to see him, you know, um, follow his passion, even in, you know, the later years of his life is something that's that's great and it's inspiring to me. So to see him to perform at a film festival and, you know, I had I, and me being in a film there, we're both doing what we love. And, and it, it, that's just a great, it's a great thing, man. It's, uh, you know, he sacrificed so much for me growing up that, you know, it's great to see him do what he loves. Yeah. yeah. Here, toast to pops. Yeah. 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 100 percent. Yep. yep. <laughs> Got the smoothie right there. Yeah. So, uh, mm, there you go. <laughs> mm. Yeah, man. So, yeah, that was really. I remember when we won. Your dad was like, "Oh, he wasn't about to cry." 
But he yeah. didn't feel it, man. I was like, oh, man. I had to give him a big hug, too. I'm like, oh, that was so sweet. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the greatest guy in the world, man. He's, he's so, such a good guy, man. He's actually uh, performing still and getting ready to release a new album in his quarantine. So we'll see. That's <laughs> great. I had the great experience of going to the Long Island Film Expo where Pinch was showing. Pinch won an award. Jake won an award. And it was fantastic because I got to meet Jake's family. Everybody was there. How did it feel to have that win in your own hometown? Um, uh, bringing the, the movie to Long Island was fantastic just because uh, I think that what I do is such a vast mystery to so many of my <laughs> friends and family back home. Uh, that they just go like, oh, Jake, he's out in L.A. and he works in the industry, but I don't. There's nothing tangible. There's nothing that they can go like, oh, this is a thing that he does. Because the majority of my work is behind camera. The majority of my work is is on things that I'm not credited for because that's the way this industry works. Hmm. You do a lot of jobs where it's like you're not. My name isn't a part of this thing, despite the fact that I worked on it for six months. That kind of thing, you know. Hmm. Um, so getting to go home and and show something that uh, that was universally mine. That was like, there's here's a thing that I conceived, I wrote, and I made, and I did all the work in before it during it and after it mm. and here it is and to have it be enjoyed uh it that meant that meant the world to me also long island is a colorful place and watching the movie with my long island family oh my goodness gracious i'll never forget my aunt trish my aunt trish with like the world's loudest bracelets she had like bracelets <laughs> like up from her elbow and every time she moved in the crowd it was like Ksh! It sounded like somebody with a rain stick just moving it up and down. <laughs> um, hearing my mother every thir- every thirty seconds lean over to the person next to her, going like, "That's a picture of my father in the background," Aww. like just stuff like that. So obviously, you know, it's a circus, but uh, still a fun a fun circus. But yeah, it meant a lot to me, and I love the Long Island Long Island International Film Expo. They're mm-hmm. they're really great people, and, and uh, it, it was really so fun because that was their twentieth anniversary. So I really enjoyed being a, a staple of their twentieth anniversary. It's such a fun. It's such a fun festival on the island. And I urge anybody uh, who may hear this who's from the tri-state area, my tri-state area. I realize that everybody in the country has a tri-state area. But when I say it, I mean my tri-state area up in New York. Um, I urge you guys to, uh, you know, check out the Long Island International Film Expo whenever it comes around and they're starting to do it. Actually, I think it's happening this month, but I don't know. I think it might just be a digital program. I'm not sure how they're doing it during the Mm. pandemic. But but yeah, I loved it. Long, Long Island is such a fun place to go and. And uh, I went there with Skull Rosary as well, again, oh, really? years prior. So it's that relationship is, uh, is always super fun. Yeah. So if you're a filmmaker out there, great idea. Start with the short, make those connections, get in those festivals. Because then, like Jake said, you meet them, you show them you're a nice person. They're like, oh, I'd love to have that person back. And be involved. Be and involved. be involved is more important. We, when we show up to a festival, festivals have gotten to know know me and Tony and, and, and Kenny as well, because Kenny's been a part of a lot of art. Kenny was also a co-star in Skull Rosary, um, who's in Pinch as well, Kenny Cooper. Uh, and I think that um, when we show up, it's, it's not just about going to the festival, it's about like having a presence. When we show up to a festival, we just bombard the town with advertisements. We show up and you can't avoid our posters. Like right. we, We've gotten in trouble with every town that we've been in because we've put posters up all over the place in places we're not supposed to just plastering the place with, with movie posters and ads for the (laughs) festival. So it's not just about showing up, but like showing up and like just coming in like a storm and a tornado and just, uh, you know, taking a place over. I think that that goes a really long way. And and it's always part of the fun too. (laughs) I remember I was at the, the Tropicana in Laughlin and I went to the bathroom. I closed the stall. What's on the inside stall door? Pinch poster. (laughs) Uh, I'm like that that's my been, boys right there. That's that my boys. That, must, that sounds like a Tony Wayne. <laughs> yeah, it seems fun. We need to. We never had a proper celebratory like rap party. Uh, it was it was always really hard because of people's schedules and because the movie was always sort of kind of in this weird flux. But um, you know, once the world is a little bit safer, quarantine wise, pandemic wise, I would really love to just go have like a picnic up there. Just bring like some softballs and just like have. I was talking to Jake about, man, wouldn't it be fun to just get a pinch reunion and everybody who was in the movie just go out and just play a game of baseball? No, no cameras, no nothing. We'll just play a game of baseball. I'm in. Yeah, right. I'm in. Uh, That is. That's a 100 percent guarantee. I'm there. Yeah, I'd have to fly out to L.A. to do that, but I'd do it. I just think that'd be a great reunion. I'm in. Looking back, you're like, 
if only we could just play baseball one time and like is as it's just like everyone be your character and let's just go play as a game as characters. I, I wish that could, that could would have been a fun thing to do like as a rehearsal technique. Dude, I, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. And then uh, the sequel, Pinch Me. You know. <laughs> This is Julie Tyler from Pinch, and I really hope you enjoy the movie. My pitch to watch Pinch. Look, look, you're in quarantine, kind of, because uh, I, I know people are going out. Um, look, man, watch it. Watch it. Enjoy. Watch it with the family. Um, be touched. And watch a good, just classic type film, man. And um, that's that's it. You can see see, see us. See these guys and, and do their thing and uh, in, enjoy and, and tell your friends. Well, I hope you enjoy watching Pinch on Amazon Video. And if you like it, please leave us a review on Amazon, IMDb, and Letterboxd. Thank you so much. My name is Jake Brown. Um, I play Teague in the movie Pinch. And everybody should watch it, rate us, review us. And I'll see you later, Barney Rubble. Come on, Gilligan. Give it to him. Good. <laughs> All right, folks. Make sure you get on Amazon Prime. And see the movie Pinch. I guarantee you, you'll love it. Hey, this is Wes Robertson from Pinch. Check us out on Amazon Prime. Leave us a good review. All right, we'll do that again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, this is Wes Robertson from Pinch. Check us out on Amazon Prime. Leave us a good review. Say whatever you like, as long as it's nice. Look at this pretty face. Would this pretty face lie to you? Would it? Leave a good review. <laughs> Hey, everybody, this is Tony Wayne from the movie Pinch, which can now be seen on Amazon Prime. If you watched it, I hope you liked it. If you haven't watched it yet, go out there and watch it. And if you would, could you take the time to leave us a good review on IMDb, Amazon, and Letterboxd? Thank you. Oh, money. All right. So everybody out there needs to go and watch Pinch on Amazon Prime. This is Sylvester Stallion saying, hey, it's my movie. That was actually a line from Kicking It. I was like, hey, that's my movie. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, I want to say thank you, Jake, for letting me be in the movie and letting me come to all those festivals. I had a blast. I always look back on them with just such fond memories. Thank you. Thank you, bud. Round of applause for Mr. Jake Lloyd. Thanks, bud. You enjoy it. Uh, you know, uh, I hope that uh, you enjoy sharing it with all of your, your loved ones, because I feel like I, the movie took so long for it to come out that I'm so happy that now the people that were involved in the movie yeah. finally get to revel in it. Because it, as an actor, as an actor, it's like, hey, weren't you in a movie that you made six years ago? And you're like, yeah, I don't know. Now you can show people you can. So I hope you're it enjoying really that, that, people. that really. Yeah, that, that, that means a lot. I'm a married guy, so I have to watch The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. You were on The Bachelorette. Can you give us some inside scoop to what goes down in that house? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The easiest the easiest way I could explain what it's like to be in a house with 15 other dudes Ugh. on The Bachelorette, it's like being in a fraternity house <laughs> and your house father is God. Because they got the whole place mic'd, and all you have to do is say what you want, and thou shalt receive it. I sure could go for, I don't know, a bottle of tequila and six shot glasses. How about you guys? Boom! It's there. Whoa. What would you guys like for dinner tonight? Should we go with uh, filet would be pretty awesome. Boom! I mean, it's, it was it, – and, and at the time, I was a high school teacher. So for me, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I, yeah. I started out – I was – you know, high school teachers are ballers, right? So, I mean, I was I was dropping limos and boats and the whole shebang <laughs> on my salary. So, it's like, you know, I'm like, I'm getting a date where I'm going around, you know, the Statue of Liberty, going around Ellis Island on a, a houseboat thing, having a rack of lamb with glazed mint sauce and champagne. I'm like, mm. this is a good deal, you know? I love it. And, uh, how many episodes did you last? I was on three episodes total. So, I got my rose. and Oh, and, I'm, and, and <laughs> Jake actually made my first reel 
ever. And he put this on there because I didn't have any footage, just some commercials yeah, I did yeah, in yeah. Toledo, Ohio. But um, but when she gave me the rose, you know, saying, like, Michael, will you expose? And I go walking up. And first of all, that rose ceremony, uh, I don't know if you could say this on your thing. I usually never swear live, but I will on this one. It's you're they've got you with this mixer drinking all night long and of course everybody wants to look shredded so you're smashing sugar-free red bulls and vodka so you're just like this the whole night and i had my senses about me i was like i'm i'm on national tv yeah. and i'm a teacher i'm not going to be that guy and there was that guy. There's always that guy but uh yeah so we're all like low carb dehydrated on vodkas and sugar-free red bulls and you know they filmed the rose ceremony like two in the morning so you know what it's like on set moving set you know moving lights moving k all yeah. this stuff oh my god so you're not done till like four thirty five in the morning Whoa. everyone's dehydrated you know everyone is absolutely on their the low carb diet tired <laughs> emotional dude, mm-hmm, but i watched them how they could totally screw you for the smallest little things this one dude we're standing there for three hours his knees buckle and he takes a knee and like falls down and everybody helps him up. And then of course, Chris Harrison's like, you know, coming up in the most intense rose ceremony ever. And it shows him like falling down. It's like, <laughs> now I know. Oh man. That was fine. I felt like that. <laughs> All Scott is that everyone's thinking they're good. Dude, we got to get, I'm, this is our time on TV. We got to be shredded. We're going to LA. It's hot tubs. Right. All this stuff. They filmed it in New York in the fall, and it was freezing balls. So there weren't any shirtless uh, scenes though, because we're so cold. But you never know. On this show, they'll throw you in the shower. Uh, we're going to do a shower scene now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, you're right. You never know. You're just sitting there sleeping. It's like, Michael, Michael, we need you really quick for, for an ITM and in the moment. And uh, I was, uh, <laughs> those were fun, too. Who was the Bachelorette? Uh, it's actually kind of a crazy story. She was the, um, I don't know if this is the way to say it or not, but she was one of the first recycled uh, cast members. She was the one that dated Andrew Firestone, who was the guy that had all those wineries. Yeah, and Firestone Wine. And whatever. Really, there you go. Really good. And it was, it was yeah, it was and he, and a nice guy, by the way. But he uh, he um, he was the bachelor. They were engaged, and then they broke it off. He might hit me up, and he's like, hey, you're going to be in Cleveland anyway. There's a casting for the show. And I'm like, what show? He's like, The Bachelorette. And I'm like, why would I do that? It's like, isn't that where they got like 30,000 dudes waiting around a corner trying to meet a chick? That's not my scene. He's like, just, are you single? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, just go do it. And yeah. I was like, all right. So he had me hooked up with a producer. So I, I missed the cattle call and I went to this room. It was a suite at one of the skyscrapers in Cleveland. And they had it all set up with the lighting, the whole shebang. And I go walking in and I met Johnny Rains. It's a nice little guy. He came walking over and he started interviewing me. And I'm just telling him everything I'm t- telling you. And I'm like, yeah. hey man, the only reason I'm really here is... I, I, my buddy set me up with this and my parents watched this show and he's like, Oh yeah. And I said, yeah, they, they watch it. And the girl that was your bachelorette, this gen girl, my dad went to college with her dad and they were in the same fraternity and they were fraternity brothers. Like my dad was her dad's big brother. Whoa. She's like, huh? And I'm like, yeah. And I asked my dad before I came down here, I'm like, is he a nice guy? He's like, he's one of my best friends. It's a great family. And I'm like, no I'm kidding. I was like, yes, yeah, so I'll meet you. And he's like, okay. And so that was that. And then I, you know, I, I, I wound up getting a phone call and they were like, Hey, um, you know, you, uh, you made the, uh, you made the top 50. We need you to come out to Los Angeles. I'd never been to California in my life. I'd never oh, been wow. west of the Mississippi. How old are so you? Over there How old are you at this, at this point? And I'm 31, right? 31. I'm a 31 year old single teacher in Michigan, little tiny farm town just you know on the weekends and I'm, I'm hoping they have some you know cover band that's going to play bon jovi tunes or something if we're lucky there'll be 30 people I, you know, I miss some. that i miss bon jovi bars sounds <laughs> right. good right now right living on a prayer a beer <laughs> i dig i dig it the most so uh so anyway so um yeah i, I digress so i was um like you need to come out to california so i was like okay so it was it was a Friday Saturday type deal, and they're going to fly me out Thursday. So mm. I played hooky on Friday and said I was sick. Mr. Foster called in and said Mr. Foster's got a tummy ache today and he can't make the school. Meanwhile, Thursday night I'm already jetted out of here on a plane to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> so I come out here and I, I did my spiel, whatever. Didn't think much of it. And the thing that's crazy about that show, since you asked, yeah. yeah. With reality TV, if it doesn't happen on camera, it doesn't happen. Mm. So we were all over by you right now. You know the Sheraton right there in uh, Universal Plaza? Yeah, yeah. We're at the Sheraton. That's where they kept us. I didn't know at the time. Nice hotel. Um, it was also right, it, right it, it, it was part of everything. Go in and out, L.A. So it's funny you said that. So what video, me, coming from the Midwest, don't know anything about L.A. other than I know that when I looked at a map, it's like, this looks like the, the valley. And I knew stereotypes of the valley. I look out the window. What video? Do, what, what what do I see on a, a building? Adam and Eve video. Oh, right across the street. Vivid. I was up pretty high. And I looked down. 
I saw it. Oh, it was vivid video. It yeah. was vivid. That's right. Not happening. It was vivid. I was like, oh, it's, it's true. I, I was like, calling my friends. Guys, the, the porn place is vivid. It's across the street. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, they keep us in our rooms and you can't see anyone. You can't talk to anyone. You're literally isolated for three oh, really? days. And they give you, oh yeah, they give you a blood test to make sure you don't have any STDs. That's smart. They give you, well, right. Yeah. Um, we picked him, but he has, you know, herbicimplex tan. Uh, that won't work. Yeah. Um, bad for TV. And then they, uh, they wind up, uh, what did they do? And then they did the psychological evaluation, which literally Scotty was like 500 questions. And it was stuff like, do you hear voices? <laughs> do demons talk to you at night? I'm like, Oh my God. So anyway, I go back. to my like, like why? What did the, what did the demon say? <laughs> did he tell oh, you something? No. Oh, you broke up there for a What's second. What's that? You broke up for a second. Like, oh, yeah. yeah I, do I uh, hear voices? Why? Uh, what did the voices tell you? Yeah. Never mind. Okay, nah. anyways. <laughs> it, was, it was... No. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, God, have I ever heard voices? But um, so anyway, so we're... Uh, 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 yeah, they say you made the top 25, and I'm like... Wow. Oh, okay. Looking up, we had a little location change here. Um, I had a friend of mine, and uh, her roommate was on the bachelor and mm-hmm. when they they put her in a limo to drive her home and they kept circling around her block and she's like aren't you gonna drop me off and the guy goes none to you cry a little so that she goes oh so if i cry a little you drop me off so she's like am i ever gonna find somebody and she did like two minutes of that she goes am i good they're like yeah that's good <laughs> did you have to do something like that a little cry by so here's my experience when I got booted because I got booted in a group. It wasn't like an individual, like, "Hey, Michael, you're gone. You got no romantic." Uh, a double you know, date. The double thing. dates are the worst. Uh, yeah. No. So they when they cut me, they cut uh, seven other dudes. So they cut a whole bunch at once. Oh yeah, it was a it was a mass beat. Was when I was done, the first thing that happened is a producer comes into the room and he's like, "Michael, are, are you okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he's like, do you need to talk to anybody about this? Are you sure you're, and I'm like, oh, I wasn't like in love with her or anything. I'm kind of glad I'm going home now. Like I'm, my, my, my work mm. is done here. Like, I mean, cause you know, our dads had a connection and we just didn't hit it off. I mean, as far as like a romantic connection, I'm just like, you know, Hey, our dads went to school together. And she's like, yeah, he usually told college stories of my brother. I'm like, okay. Mm. She's like, I'm like, you're from Cleveland. I went to college outside of Cleveland. She's like, yeah, I moved to Chicago. I'm like, I'm out. So, so I was good, yeah. but the producer says to me, it was really funny. He's like, he comes up and I'll never forget. Jonathan Earl was his name. And he's like, this is going to change your life. And I'm like, cause I don't watch this stuff. Right, so I was right. like, uh, okay, thanks. We'll see what happens. So sure enough, I get back. It airs. Uh, I'm from a small town. It's on the front page, this sort of stuff. All my students, I already, <laughs> <laughs> some, I, I had, I had students from other classrooms coming in, asking me for an autograph. I had my students ask me for an autograph. I'll t- I'd be like, I'll tell you what, do your homework and I'll autograph it for yeah, you. I'll sign your A test. Yeah. Get an A, I'll give you a <laughs> <laughs> Right? Um, but, uh, but anyway, that was pretty crazy. This is a lesson to you. The Bachelorette is a gateway drug to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> get well, a little taste. See, get a little taste. It. But you know the crazy thing about the thing about the Bachelorette is I think we both know that most of these contestants that go on there now are absolutely doing it to get their Instagram followings up and all right. that kind of stuff. I swear to you, as God is my witness, the reason I was on that show, they're always like, I'm here for the right reasons. I was like, look, my dad knows this girl's parents' parents and said she's from a good family and she's a nice person. That's right. number one. Awesome. Number two, I'm in Farmtown, Michigan, where the school that I'm working at, everybody's married and has kids already, or they're, um, let's say, 30 to 40 years older than me at the time. Ooh, yeah. That's not working for me. And I'm just like, yeah, I'll go on there and see if I can meet somebody. That's cool. And then I Sounds did it. Great. it was like, yeah, the byproduct, the, yeah, the byproduct was coming out here. But the irony to that is I had no movie star desires going into that show. Just, hmm. yeah, I'd like to meet a nice girl. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. See, ladies, there's big hunky guys out there looking for love. Stop <laughs> hanging out with those bad guys and pick a nice guy. That's right. 